Hey, it's Earl GarMD, and today I'm going to show you how I look at a shoulder x-ray. I'm basically going to focus in on how to exclude an anterior dislocation of the shoulder. And let's start right now. So basically, most people start out looking at a shoulder x-ray, looking at this film, the frontal film. But let me show you how I start off looking at a shoulder film. I like to go straight to this view right here. This is called the axillary view of the shoulder. And let me just orient you. Uh, you can see there's a lot of bony overlap here, so it's a little confusing. But you can find this bony projection right here and that's the coracoid process. So now I know that this is anterior and this is posterior. I can then also see this bone coming across here, which is the clavicle. With all the clavicle out here, I can see it intersecting with another bone here, or bony prominence, and this is the acromion. So as I come back and follow that backwards, I can then find the scapular blade, and then I come forward and I can find the glenoid right here. So we're seeing the glenoid kind of in a short axis or a cross section. I'm kind of looking down uh, from above on top of it. And I want you to notice, you can see here this area of uh, this line here, and this represents the glenoid rim. And you can see the nice smooth curvature of the humeral head. This is the articular surface. And you can see that it's in direct continuity with this glenoid rim. So right here I can say with, with confidence that this is a normal glenohumeral position. There is no glenohumeral dislocation. So let me show you another way to exclude an anterior dislocation of the shoulder. Uh, this is the scapular Y view. So why do they call it a Y view? Well, you can see the coracoid process here uh, anteriorly, and I can see the acromion here posteriorly, and you can see as they connect up, they kind of form a Y here, along with the scapular blade here. I want you to notice when you're looking at this area, you can sort of faintly see this oval structure right here, and that's actually the glenoid right there. Now this is being viewed on FOSS, Basically, as I'm staring straight at it, uh, right at it like a bowl, and I can see the humeral head is completely overlying that glenoid. So this is, again, further proof that the humeral head is in direct contact with the glenoid, and I can confirm there is no dislocation of the humeral head. There's a anatomic glenohumeral position. Okay, so now let's show a quick case to kind of illustrate what we just talked about. Uh, again, this is a scapular Y view, as you can see. Got the coracoid here, the acromion here, and the scapular blade here. So again, you can see this kind of oval shape of the glenoid, but you can see that the humeral head is over here and is definitely not overlapping the glenoid. So here we have the axillary view, and you can see it's a little bit poorly positioned, but you can see the clavicle here and you can see the glenoid here. You can see that glenoid rim, there's this dense line here, and you can see that this nice curvature of the humeral head has no relationship to this glenoid. So it's definitely dislocated. In this case, since the clavicle is here, you can sort of faintly see it there. This is anterior, so the humeral head is anterior to the glenoid, and this is the most common type of dislocation of the shoulder, an anterior dislocation of the humerus. So that's how I look at uh, the shoulder x-rays looking for dislocation. Feel free to check out some other videos where I'm going to talk about a more general search pattern and other things about a shoulder x-ray that are important to know. Thanks for watching.